This guy embarrassing me right here is Caruso, and at 30 years old, he's on his comeback to reach the ATP tour. Now, a lot of you will know him from his YouTube channel, My Tennis HQ. But for those of you that don't know, who is this guy? Caruso rose to a career high of 33 in the world on the ITF Junior rankings before joining UCLA, one of the top US Division I colleges in the nation. He played on the same team as Maxime Cressy, Marcus Giron, and Mackenzie McDonald. After college, he quickly rose to a ranking of 371 in the world, where he was winning 25Ks and beating guys like Chris Eubanks. However, after reaching his career high, he decided to take a break from tennis due to various factors, including how little tennis players of his level earned. He then moved into coaching and opened up his YouTube channel, which he's still running to this day. And now he's back, hungry for more. He's already ranked 611 within a few months and currently sits just over a 14 UTR. And he just picked up his biggest win of the comeback, beating world number 281, 6463. He also has a habit of destroying his opponents, which include very recently world number 13, Taylor Fritz, where Carew beat him 6-2. Can I even get a game against this guy? Well, we played each other a few months ago in some short sets and that video smashed the 6,000 like like goal, which brings us to today, a proper match. So let's go. So I jumped on court to hit with Carew for the warm up for this much anticipated practice match. Now, the body was feeling a little bit sluggish and let me just quickly explain why. So last week I actually played a UTR event in Florida where I played multiple three hour matches over the week, which was super intense. I'm gonna be talking more about that in this coming Thursday's video. And I actually flew from Florida to LA a few days ago for some 25K tournaments I'm playing here in California. Now I really wanted to get this practice session in with Carew, otherwise it wasn't gonna happen. So we drove five hours from Indian Wells at 5 a.m. all the way to this tennis club where Carew said he was going to play against us in the morning. So I was feeling super sluggish, a little bit jet lagged and pretty fatigued. But I said to myself, I was going to give it my best shot, see what I got and try and get a game. Last time this did not go that well for me. I want to try and be as relaxed as possible. Try and steal a break and uh, yeah, see what happens. So Carew decided to serve first. I really just wanted to put that first ball in the court, really try and pressure him, especially if he came forward to the net. As you can see, the guy was clinical. So definitely put a lot of pressure on me to try and hit some really good shots. Otherwise I knew this guy's just gonna roll me over. A little bit of adaptation there. <laughs> Ball's bouncing everywhere. You see me here moving up quite a lot on that kind of second serve return, really trying to be aggressive. He was really coming into the net a lot. He's done so well to get that volley deep. Then it was time for my first service game. I also decided to try and opt for that serve and volley approach. I definitely think putting some pressure on Crew was going to be important, as I think in the baseline rallies he had me beat. But as you can see there, putting that really fast return and getting up in the rallies really put me under some pressure. I was struggling a little bit with those movement into the corners. And again here, breaking me already in the first game. Right, so I'm going to be asking Carew some questions. We're actually filming this at a different time to when we played before just because we're both busy men and we've got stuff to do. <laughs> Obviously, you're playing back on the tour now. You're competing again. Back when we saw each other last time, you were more of a coaching role for Marcus. What's the biggest difference, like playing Futures tournaments, ITF tournaments, to being on tour in the Grand Slams? That is a good question. <laughs> that put me on the spot right now. The better question is almost like it, how things are kind of similar. Yeah. In a lot of ways. Like you go play, there's a lot of waiting around. It's all the same kind of issues that you'd have in any tournament. Like at Wimbledon, for example, when we met, like it rained and, you know, we, we, it took four days for us to get the doubles in. What I found the most interesting was how kind of the same issues were there. Um, at the highest level versus this level, aside from the fact that we make no money. Yeah, <laughs> I just cashed my check for $60 or something. <laughs> so he's the older better than me, but I'm, I'm getting that. So of course, going down a break this early on isn't the way you want to start it, but I did go down four or five love last time. So again, just trying to hold on. He was really pressuring my backhand side and I just wasn't able to find my depth there. And I think this game was the epitome of a stressful, I don't know what to do choke. And it led to shots like this which I can't even explain how those happened. So I'm four love down already and my ego is taking a little bit of a beating. But on the other side is Carew serving absolute aces, making me feel like an amateur player. And this was quite a humbling experience, to be honest. Also guys, less than 50% of you that watched last week's video are actually subscribed. So if you haven't already, go down there, smash that subscribe button, and now let's get back to the video. Do you have a player who one day or at some point in your life you'd love to play in a match? I mean, I would love to just like, be on court with Carlos just because he's just a highlight machine. Yeah. But I'd be scared to not have a chance of like winning a game, you know? So that 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 could be tricky. Or, or Sinner nowadays, it'll be really difficult. Yeah. I mean, they, they were just seeing the ball too big. But those would be the two. Obviously, Roger was always my guy. So if I could have done anything with Roger, that would have been awesome. So here at Five Love Down, I said, look, enough's enough. Let's start playing smart. Let's not try and be so rushed on my shots. Last time I went kind of four, five love down. I need to really recompose myself and try and just start playing within myself a little bit bit more make Carew hit those winners and um, that 
tactic began paying off, I began to warm up a little bit and this set got a whole lot more competitive. I began to make a much higher percentage of first serves and really began to turn up the heat. If only I could have played like this to begin with. But shots like that, backhand winner down the line, just goes to show why I personally believe Karu can be top 100 in the world if he really applies himself. Coming forward like this, phasing up a little bit more, was definitely what I needed to start doing. And there we go, getting my first game on the board. Are there any players in the top 100 right now that you think, I reckon I can get it close or even win? Oh. It's a tough, it's a tough one. I don't want to put you on it's the spot. A but. It's a tough one. I actually just had this question. Someone asked me this question. And I actually said Taylor. And we've practiced so many times at this point that I think there is more of a likelihood that I, I would... I'd, have a chance if I was playing Taylor. Someone asked me about top 10, not top 100. Top 100, you know, if I could get maybe like a clay court specialist on a fast hardcore, like a Carbales Baena maybe yeah, on, okay. you know what I mean? Someone yeah, like yeah. that, again, don't wanna, I mean, sorry yeah. guys, like you'd still smoke me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying like, if I had to like yeah. pick, someone it would be someone like that so what's better than getting one game is getting two can i break now with a lot of confidence from actually getting my first game i began to have slightly higher expectations of actually being able to break here but as you can see karu going up 40 30 on his serve me starting to play much more confidently karu still winning a lot of points by hitting winners but i'm also making a lot less unforced errors which is making these points so much more competitive than they were at the beginning and i've got that fear factor out of my head of trying to put in a good result kind of thing it's always difficult with the camera on trying to do well and get some good points kind of for YouTube but I kind of just locked into tennis mode here and said look I'm just gonna keep fighting and try and win and again getting another break point here this was a real big opportunity to try and kind of flip the script a little bit and find some footing in this match but that ball just landing on the line, calling it in. I was quite a fair player and crew taking the first set. Do you have a dream doubles player? I'm going with Federer of all time. Yeah, of Federer course. will be all time. That, that's like not Cur even a Current, I would want to say Alcraz or Sinner from like a level and just from like a being there. But actually in terms of like the person I'd probably really like to be on court with would be Public or Kyrgios. I was, gonna, I was about you to know. say, I think the guy They'd that I would so want to play fun. doubles with would yeah, probably yeah. be curious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or Medi. Yeah, yeah. It would be hilarious to play doubles with Medvedev. Because, <laughs> like, I'm. Yeah. I would, be the, Ru I would Ru be the. I would be the. Yeah, just like... I'd be the weak link in that. Like, I'm good in doubles, but I'm not good enough to, like, just because I'm playing with someone top 10 that I would, we would do that well. Yeah. So I might as well have some fun. The beginning of the set, once again, wanted to carry on that momentum, but it was almost demotivating with Karu just absolutely plastering the ball like that. I'm sure, as you guys know, he is one of, probably one of the best ball strikers that you've ever seen, uh, even with some of the tour guys and, you know, beating guys like Taylor Fritz 6-2 is just a testament to that. And of course, you know, this is only a training match. Probably wouldn't have played that backhand up the line like that in an actual match. But again here, wanting to sort of redeem myself a little bit and at least hold serve for a second time in this match. Bombing down serves like that with the ace T was pretty satisfying. And here, at least getting one back. But we decided to stop here at 2-1. I'd had a really long week, like I explained. I didn't want to put next week's 25k in jeopardy where I was going to be playing singles and doubles with Karu himself. So if you're looking forward to that, make sure you go down there, subscribe and like this video. It's going to be an awesome doubles match that I'm playing. And also, of course, getting back to competing on the professional circuit for singles is super exciting. I'm hoping I can put a slightly better performance than this. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you guys in the next one.